Hello everyone, this is Emily and one DID, and I have a new project for you. This is we're going to build an adcock direction finding antenna today. Um, so for those of you who were in the fox hunt, um, you would know that the at uh, having a directional antenna is a good idea, and hopefully you'll like this one. It's pretty easy to build. So here's the theory. We've got four eighth wave antennas. Um, they're mounted two and two, so they're dipole. So we're ending up with a quarter wave. And if you notice the red and green lines, they're cross-coupled. And they're cross-coupled because we want um, the signals arriving at the center point to be out of phase. Also, you'll notice we have two feed lines that are um, one is a quarter wavelength and the other is a one half wavelength and this will shift the mixing point and the directionality of the antenna and then we're just going to bring it down to, with some 50, 50 ohm coax uh, that is uh, going to go into whatever radio you're going to use um, as you're uh, fox hunting uh, radio, or into, say, for example, a, uh, could be a uh, uh, an attenuator of some sort. Um, now, you'll notice at the top, it says 75 to 95 ohm coax. It's not critical, but if you think about it, if we're going to combine two coaxes, so let's say if we have 95 ohms, and we're feeding, uh, taking two of them, we cut them in half, that's going to be 40, uh, roughly 48 ohms, and we're feeding it into a 50 ohm coax. So not a terrible mismatch. 75 ohms, we, were, we would be splitting that to 37 and a half, uh, it goes down to 50 ohms, so it's a little bit more of a mismatch, but this is a receive only antenna, so that won't be a big, as big a deal. Um, you could use 50 ohms, and it'll be 25 ohms combined into a 50 ohm coax. Um, still not terrible, and like I said, this is a receiving antenna. You're not going to transmit on it, and so um, since it's a receive-only antenna, guess what? It's not going to matter that much. So here's the math we need. Uh, we need to know lambda, which is the symbol for wavelength, and 2 meters is the band we're targeting. I'll explain that a little bit more later. We have, um, uh, so one wavelength is 2 meters, which is 78.75 inches. Uh, one half uh, wavelength is 1 meter, or 39.37. And a quarter wavelength is 0.5 meters, or 19.68 meters. And then the one eighth wavelength that we're going to use for the antenna parts is uh, a quarter wave. Uh, I'm sorry, a quarter of a meter, 0.25 meters, or 9.84 inches. Now, I have a little note down here for the coax lengths of the cross coupling coaxes. We're going to need to multiply by the velocity factor. So, here's the materials we need. We need 40 inches of 400 ohm ladder line, which is sometimes called window pane, cut in half. Um, so you can really only use, uh, you really only need to use 20 inches, to be honest, um, because you can use both sides. It's a little harder to cut, though, but that's okay. We need thin coax. I like RG179 uh, because it's um, cheap and easy to get. Um, it's 75 ohms as well. And we're going to use that to make a one quarter piece, one quarter lambda piece and a one half lambda piece shortened by the velocity factor. Now, if you don't know what a velocity factor is, look up the type of coax you have, the specs for it on the web, and then you can typically find the velocity factor. It might be as a percentage of slow. Um, but you're going to take the actual decimal number. So if it says 79%, you're going to multiply by 0.79. The other thing we need is six feet of RG58 or RG8X with your choice of connector that's going to hook up to your radio or your attenuator. Um, 
we need six 10 inch long pieces of uh, PVC, um, one 18 inch long uh, half inch PVC for the handle, uh, some T sections, and five and a half, uh, I'm sorry, five half inch PVC caps, and some PVC glue. Um, the one thing I'll say, the PVC is all optional, um, sort of. Um, you can make the same antenna on wood uh, if you want. You could make it on, uh, uh, you know, uh, some kind of other plastic. Um, but for the most part, I prefer to use PVC. Um, for tools, we need a soldering iron and some solder. We're going to need some wire cutters, a wire stripper, and a razor knife for trimming the ladder, ladder line. Okay, so here's how it's going to look. 19.7 um, and 13.4 are the feed lines, shortened by the velocity factor. Um, the 50 ohm connects to it, and the antenna stubs, the eighth wave antennas uh, dipole is right here. And they're 50, uh, 180 degrees out of phase. We're separating them by uh, half a wavelength. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, a quarter wavelength. So we're going to keep them 19.7 inches uh, apart. So the first thing we need to do is measure out the ladder line. Now I said 10 inches. We need 19, we need 9.8 inches, but we're going to take that out of um, the middle. And you'll see why I, where I have the, uh, the little clip there. That's going to be uh, part of what we need. You'll notice that I've notched the ladder line and I've stripped it off so the ends are bare. I've left a little bit of the ladder line there and that's to keep the two ends separated. Um, we now have two pieces of, of wire for a dipole right here on each side. And the center point is going to be where we feed into it. The next thing we do is we strip the thin coax and tin the ends. You can see here I'm using 179. And I've tinned the ends with some solder. And then we're going to solder the thin coax to the ladder line. We're going to do this, by the way, on both sides. We're going to mirror them. And then we're going to stuff that into a PVC T and run the feed line down a PVC pipe. After we do that, we're going to run the feed line through uh, a cap. So you can see here, this is my RG58. It's going through um, one of the PVC caps and uh, it feeds up through the handle. Um, at first you're going to feed it all the way up so it'll be easier to solder and then you're going to um, you know uh, pull the coax down so that you can make it all nice and neat and the last soldering step is we're going to attach the coax to the thin coax so you can see here we just have it all soldered and then I put a couple of wire ties on it to make it all nice and neat and then we're going to assemble all the PVC and stuff in and, you know, we make sure all the wire is stuffed inside. And now we're done. So let's go out and test it. Hi, this is Emily, N1DID. We finished the Adcock antenna. We're going to look for our fox. And there it is, actually. So you can see broadside, we can hear it. We'll wait for it to cycle again. Let me turn it off. It goes over 40 seconds. So the main thing is, on the broad side of this antenna, this side is where we're going to receive the signal. When we move the side in, the front side in, it's going to null out and the signal should disappear. And that's what we're hoping to hear. So let's wait for the fox. There it is. 
So broadside, that direction. Bring, the, bring this in and null it. And there we go. Fox has disappeared. We know where to go. We can turn and travel in that direction. And we'll be all set. And one DID. Enjoy your fox hunting. Okay, so we're back here in the garage. And a couple of things I wanted to mention. The first thing is, um, if the signal is really strong, the first thing you should do is try to tune to the third harmonic. Remember I said it was important for two meters. If you're at two meters and you multiply by three, that's the third harmonic, you're going to be up in the 70 centimeter band. So take whatever frequency you're looking, listening to, go times three, tune to that frequency, your signal will be much less and it make it easier to find the, the fox. Also, if you can get an attenuator, that's a good thing. And maybe we'll do a, a project to show you how to build one of those. But in the meantime, um, just remember, you can skin a cat many, many different ways. This is the way that I wanted to build this antenna, but it may not be the way you want to. In the meantime, this is Emily in 1DID. 7-3 everyone, enjoy your day.